Hi, my name is Daniel Shattuck. My name is Rock Hatzel, and I'm Patrick O'Donoghue. And this is our Tesla coil and plasma speaker sound system. Do, Do not try this at, at home. So I'm going to give you an overview of our system. Our system is, a, is very similar to a regular sound system, except for one big difference. We use electrical arcs to produce music. Uh, so you may be thinking that this doesn't really seem possible, maybe it seems a little bit like science fiction, but it's true, and I'm going to tell you how we do that. So electrical arcs produce heat. Uh, they can produce quite a lot of heat, in fact. If you can control the amount of heat they put out, you can create pressure waves in the air. And that's actually what sound is, is just a difference in pressure uh, going through the air and vibrating against your ears in a sense. So we have a couple different kinds of technologies we use. Over here is a plasma speaker. The way a plasma speaker generally works is we put a very high voltage over two pieces of metal, two electrical leads, and we maintain a plasma arc uh, over about an inch. Uh, this arc is constant and quite silent when it's running, and we'll show you that later. Uh, we modulate the power output of that arc to produce sound. And these do high frequencies very well, so we use these very similar, uh, in a very similar manner to tweeters in a regular sound system. And we have a right and left channel in our system for that. We also have the Tesla coil here, which is right behind me. The Tesla coil is a bit louder and a bit bigger, and it uses a different kind of modulation, which we will explain later, but it works in the same manner. It produces a roughly two inch electrical arc that creates heat, and we modulate that to produce sound. Okay, so I'm going to give an overview of our system block diagram here. So at the top we have our audio input signal coming in, and the first thing that happens is that gets split in two. One side goes over to our subwoofer. The subwoofer was generously donated by Donald here, and that is independently powered and basically independent of our system. The audio also goes into our main block here. So this block does quite a few things. Uh, it does filtering for the plasma speakers. It does a stereo to mono conversion for the Tesla coil. Uh, it also splits off to the equalizer for the Tesla coil. There's volume control for the plasma speakers, and there are sep two separate pulse width modulation circuits for each plasma speaker. So after all that happens, uh, we split the right and left channels off. The left channel, which is roughly 300 to 20 kilohertz, goes off to the left plasma speaker, and same thing with the right channel for the right plasma speaker. The Tesla coil signal gets uh, turned into mono, like I said, and that's pretty much the full spectrum except for the low end, uh, below 100 hertz. That goes to the equalizer, which is actually fed back to the main board PCB, uh, but directly goes to the Tesla coil after that as a pulse width modulated signal. Okay, so this is our main PCB board. So here and here, you'll see a mirrored circuit, and these are the filters for the right and left plasma speaker. These are TL74 chips, and each side is a fourth order high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of somewhere around 300 hertz. So we're sending all the fr high frequencies to the plasma speakers. And there's a volume control knob right here that controls both uh, plasma speaker volume. So we also have two pulse width modulation circuits here. This one is for the plasma speaker, and this one over here is for the Tesla coil. So one of the unique design considerations of this project was the different types of pulse width modulation we could possibly use. The plasma speaker side uses a special kip, chip, the TL494, which really does all the work for us. So these two potentiometers control the frequency and the dead time output of this pulse wave. This generates a pulse wave all on its own, and then we control it using these potentiometers and an incoming audio signal. Now, as I said earlier, the plasma arc is constant, so we just modulate the amount of current flowing through that arc. 
Now on the Tesla coil side, we use a comparator to create a pulse signal from what is essentially a sine wave input. So it's very, very simple. And that pulse wave actually goes and controls the, uh, it acts like an on-off switch for the Tesla coil. So I'm going to explain a general how a Tesla coil works. So we have a wire as a primary and this wire as a secondary. This known as light inductance and this is capacitance. And because we have a capacitance and inductance, it creates all the circuits. And that's how we know the resonant frequency of the Tesla coil. So uh, by providing alternative current to the primary of the coil, and because this is coupled to the secondary of the coil, and that energy build up at the other end, provide a high voltage, and that high voltage go to the end of the breakpoint, and then it forms the arc, and that arc is uh, dissipated into the air. In this case, we have a solid state Tesla coil, and this Tesla coil can play music. So, how the Tesla coil actually work in detail, we have a feedback transformer right here. When the Tesla coil uh, turn on, it has its own resonant frequency. So the feedback transformer pick up that signal and then send it to a Schmidt trigger. A Schmidt trigger converts that signal into a square wave. And then that square wave go all the way to the gate uh, MOSFETs. And by using two MOSFETs, it actually provides us a better swings. And since it's alternate, it creates an alternative current. So alternative currents go to the primary of the Tesla core and, this, and then it coupled with the secondary of the Tesla core then it uh, builds up a high voltage and that's how the spark is formed into the air. So this is the plasma speaker in a little bit more detail. Uh, over here we have a, a 110 power coming in. Uh, this goes through a transformer. Um, over on the line we typically pull about 1 amps. Through the transformer, it's then transformed to 30 volts DC, uh, nominal about 4 amps. And then this is fused and then runs into the board itself. Um, the board uh, has a positive rail of 30 volts, which runs the main power circuitry that goes to the MOSFETs. Uh, from the MOSFETs, that 30 volts is then sent out to a flyback transformer. Um, and the flyback transformer's job is to step that voltage up uh, we go from the nominal about 2.3 amps up to uh, approximately um, 12,000 volts at 4 milliamps. And then up here on the top, that's where the arc is formed. So these leads, the distance between the leads is how much potential is needed to cross that area. And that right now, uh, that's about 12,000 to 15,000 volts. Um, and then on the board, we also have a 15 volt rail coming off uh, that I had to design. A, uh, and a 12 volt rail that powers the filter circuitry. So for design considerations for the plasma speaker, uh, one of the things I had to do was to try to create a stronger, cleaner arc. Uh, at first we got kind of a weak arc, so I had to beef up that signal somehow. So one of the things I did was I took this driver chip here and increased the voltage on that to, from 12 to 15 volts. Uh, that gave us a stronger signal. Uh, it gave me the ability to draw uh, jump a, a larger space gap in the arc uh, by transforming that 15 volts up. Uh, so, so what it did was it went over to the MOSFETs and it allowed more current to be drawn through the MOSFETs. And when that happens, then more current was sent out to the uh, transformer, which would then go up to the arc itself. So here are a few hints and tips from us for the future students in senior design. Mine is to socket every IC so that you can t easily take it in and out. Uh, and just replace those chips if they break, especially on Expo Day. My tip is, if you work on the high voltage uh, projects, do not uh, work alone. And my tip would be to order some spare parts for the things you think are going to break. If anything's going to break, make sure you have a spare part on hand. And the
plasma speakers. That's our project. Thank you.